Welcome to Business Connection. I'm Liz Spencer. We have a wonderful guest in studio for you to meet today. It's Jeff Lucas. He's a licensed clinical professional counselor with Dunham Counseling. Jeff, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me here. Tell me a little bit about um, lots of stress in today's um, environments. Um, tell me a little bit about how that's impacting the people you see and the types of people you see in your practice. Well, I think people uh, have a fundamental lack of values or they're, they're confused about what their values are and this in turn leads to difficulty with relationships and, and having trouble promoting harmony in their relationships at home and work. And this accumulates and leads into stress, mm -hmm. you know, lots of stress. Lots of stress, yes. Yeah. Are, is that what people are, when they're coming in to talk with you, are, are they chatting with you about stress levels and then you're kind of peeling all that back to find out where everything is? Yeah, we do an exploration and, and we find out what the co uh, cause of that is, what the source of it is, and, and we go at it. We try to under, first understanding then, and then interventions or approaches or whatever. Well, and well, that's helpful because I think lots of people are stressed, but they don't really understand why they're stressed. They're just, I'm stressed. There can be, as I said, family, workplace, something back from their childhood long ago that they don't even recall. And in the process of exploration, we sort of pull that or it comes out, surfaces. That's great. And it's, it's helpful to see. I always think it's so helpful rather than necessarily depending on family, though family is a nice place to start. It's always nice to, to seek out some extra help because you do know how to take my, you know, my stressed out world and, and make it help me make sense of it a little bit. And so I appreciate that. Um, we also have a growing problem with alcohol and substance abuse, and sometimes mm. we are using that to cope with our stress. How is your practice, what is your practice seeing, and, and how are you working with that? Well, I mean, we see plenty of alcohol abuse, and, and we see uh, there's drugs, and, and then there are other kinds of, you know, what we call process addictions, like gambling and uh, food and sex, you know, porn and, and all that. And we do an assessment initially. And then that, that uh, we try to find out what the severity is. And then, you know, we either recommend individual or um, couples or family or group therapy or even a, you know, a hospital or a psychiatrist, depending on how severe things are. So full circle. Full, you've got the ability to help at every level. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. I mean, if, we, if it's not enough in our office and we have the outside resources, um, I also have other uh, um, kinds of alternative approaches which have been very useful, like uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, also known as EMDR, self-hypnosis, um, and then another approach I have called brainwave optimization, which balances brain waves and takes away cravings faster than just about any other approach that I'm aware of. So, you know, we, we have a lot of things. Not everybody's ready for groups and 12 steps, so we just have a whole kind of arsenal of things that, that are available for people to try. Well, that's, that, that's nice because I, I think people don't, a, don't know what to expect, and I don't think one size fits all. No, I mean, um, a lot of treatment programs, yeah, they'll, they'll emphasize everybody um, go through 12-step. I know there are other treatment programs that don't emphasize so much on that, but so we need to be flexible and just take people where they're at. That's, that's very important and yeah, critical. You know, one thing that we were talking about off-camera was the idea of uh, cultural diversity and, and, and blended families causing some stress, some, some discourse, and that is something that you also help with, which I, th I think is really neat. Yeah, well, we, uh, we sort of pride ourselves on sensitive, respectful uh, uh, appreciation for the cultural differences and uh, and we really live in a community I understand now it's 25 percent minority mm -hmm. we take people from all all continents almost and we see that in Europe Asia South America and we work with it we're, we're we have that background I'm, I'm in an intercultural marriage myself and um, uh, one of our counselors speaks Spanish another speaks uh, Hindi and Urdu so we're pretty well equipped to handle uh, cultural differences. And, and they're facing the same issues, uh, uh, these people. But it adds another layer uh, when you have the cultural differences and trying to adjust to culture and, and run into different values and that kind of thing. It can be a very big challenge. Well, a very big change, which is uh, you know, one of the things that causes us the most angst and stress that we may not even realize. Correct. Yeah, big change can be a, a lot. 
Right. Well, and especially trying if you're going back to the you know the the family dynamics of blending in different cultures or blending in two different families from two different marriages. Yeah, that's another cultural adap mm -hmm. adaptation, which there is a lot of blended families, and we mm -hmm. also work with that too, and so that parents are, can get on the same page and navigate the rapids of of uh, uh, that mix. And, <laughs> We have right. a lot of experience with that. Well, and a lot necessary because, you know, families, whether, the, you know, everybody comes up with a little set, set of different traditions and expectations, and, and that is trying to maneuver all that. Yeah. You have your hands full over there. It's a challenge, yeah. It is. Yeah. We're uh, quite seasoned. We're, we're, we're seasoned, experienced with that, comfortable that, working with that. That's good because I think it's um, important because not only do you have family, blending the families, but you also have to, you offer couples therapy too, because mom and dad need sometimes, or husband and wife need some help that way too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, couples, uh, people come in and they, they come in with chronic uh, couples dissatisfaction, any, or they just want to fine tune the marriage. Mm -hmm. We work with, kind of with the whole continuum, or there's, you know, there's usually problems with communication. When there's problems with a marriage or relationship, there's there's problems with the communication, and both both people are are responsible for that, and we're experts in. And working on that, Jeff. We often, um, as parents, uh, think about need, that we may need a little help with our our teenagers. Yes, is that a, a group you see as well? Absolutely. We all work with teens in our practice. It, it's a it's a trying time. It is. It's a it's a. Uh, I think biologically, hormonally, it's a time of of uh, cease a roller coaster, and then behaviorally, that's manifested as well. That's a big challenge for the family and and the the kids going through it and, and often you just you need that support to get you through it and there's a light at the end of the tunnel let me just say that that's awesome well you do need some support oftentimes mom and dad are just don't know what to do so it's nice to know that you do that as well uh, yes we have a lot of experience with that very happy to, to work with these challenging situations that are throwing your way by your kids how do you know when you need professional help when when, ma, when your your support group isn't enough uh, when you're you're overwhelmed right and and uh, and the usual uh, people you turn to don't seem to have the answers that you need you can't seem to find them within yourselves and there seems to be no channels open to you that's when you can call an impartial professional uh, with who may have dealt with the same or similar problems that you're presenting and, and we have the experience to facilitate and guide you through uh, how, understanding that and then making the changes you need to make for your particular situation. And how do, how do, we, how do we choose the right one for us, Jeff? How do we know that you know, you are, your style is very approachable for me? You're warm, you're mm. easy to talk to. I can tell instantly you've got a lot of background, but that mm. may not work for everybody. It may work for some. How do, how right. do we choose that person? So uh, it's an, it definitely an individual fit. I mean, the first step is to call me mm -hmm. and then uh, you have an interview with me on the phone and then uh, see how that goes. And then um, either uh, it would be somebody else in the, in the practice who can deal with your, address your problem or some uh, gender that you prefer, either male or female, we, we can tailor it to fit your needs and, and what your style is. I think it's all about finding the right person and, and knowing when to reach out. And it seems like, Jeff, you've, you've got the, the experience that kind of can handle a lot of different <laughs> parts of our lives. I've been at this for 30 years. I've seen it, pretty much seen it all. <laughs> well, and I think it's, I think that's awesome because I think in different parts of our lives, we need different mm -hmm. types of, of, of help. So, yeah, I mean, at, at some time or another, everyone's under stress or pressure or, you know, challenges and, and, you know, it's, it's really healthy thing to reach out for help when you, when you need it. And, and if you don't and things get worse, well, you know, you know what the outcome can be. Right, and we don't want that outcome. So no. we want them to call you Jeff. Jeff, thanks for stopping yeah. by and telling me a little My bit pleasure. about what you do and what we should be thinking about when it comes to therapy and counseling. We're going to be right back with more Business Connections. Stay tuned.